Oh, this is empty. Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing. I haven't been awake very long. I was awake pretty late through the night, just, you know, chilling, listening to the rain, because the rain started early this morning around 3 a.m. or so, something like that. And it hasn't really lit up. So it is now after one it is like after 1 30 actually i woke up whoo rumbling i woke up around 12 something slept pretty good through the morning it was really quiet except for the whoosh and a slight rumble but it didn't bother me i have been successful already in getting the dogs to go out in this though only into the front yard i'm going to reveal some scary factors about this experience but before i do that before i i share I wanted to tell you that it's already made landfall. It was supposed to make landfall, Hurricane Ida that is, supposed to make landfall later this afternoon, maybe even as late as seven something. But it's already made landfall in Port Fouchon. Uh, as far as the radar shows, we're out of the cone. Now, power's been in and out since I've woke up. So has the internet. But I am, it is coming back and you know, it's coming and going. I'm able to look at radar. It's already hit Fushan and looks like it's gonna just keep going like up towards Homa and all that. So pretty soon it should downgrade. It's still a cat four. Let me go get some more coffee. I have a bit of a cup pre-made. It's not a whole cup, but I don't need that much coffee. Scary factors. What are the scary factors of my experience? Well, I've been through many hurricanes, including Cat 5s like Katrina, but it was over in the Bywater in New Orleans, and now I'm in Bell Chase in a trailer. Yeah, that's the, the main scary factor here. I've never rode out a hurricane in a trailer before, and this is a trailer, and it's rumbling and shaking, but I think it's going to be over soon. As far as the worst part, we're going to get a lot of rain and some more wind. Might lose the power for good. People have already lost power every uh, lots of places, and lots of places they've lost power. Gretna, I have a friend over there. They haven't had power since 11. Probably going to lose it for good here. Still have water pressure. Nothing major has happened to the trailer. I haven't been awake very long, right? The coffee just started to kick in. The dogs, you know, their pressure valves have been released a little bit. There are some limbs down out there. There is wind, there is rain. I'm in a good place in Bell Chase. It's not really prone to flooding. It's kind of a little high here in, in comparison to other places. And I'm inside the levee and flood wall protection area. I'm, I'm you know, inside the protection stuff which is good. I think I'm gonna make actually more coffee. Need more water in here. So, every now and then something thwacks up against the side of the trailer or the roof. Need to get these dishes done. That's from last night. I was kind of lazy. So, let's get some coffee going here. We got that, but I'm gonna make some to add to the we're using French market coffee, the dark roast. One. Ooh, flicker of the light bulb. Two. Would you hear that? Three. This bag is about done, but I have another one here. If I get super nervous, I, I've got a plan for that. But for the moment, just want more coffee. I think I might be sustaining winds out there in between 40 and 50 with gust over 50. You feeling safe down there? Whenever it thunders, my big dog, Tulsa, the red bone, goes up underneath my desk. The whole, ever since I've had her, is what I meant to say. Ever since I've had her, she's done that. She does not like thunder. Yaz gets a little nervous about some things. If it's really intense, he'll get a little nervous and he'll come over like this to me. He's a little nervous, can you tell? Ooh, rustly and bustly out there. Here we go. Let's uh, make it white. 
All right. Look, I got an emergency beer. I'm not really much of a drinker. Bought this like almost two months ago, this six pack. Still got four left. Clean up my messes. Since yesterday, I've been flooded with a lot of comments, different ones, mostly pertaining to the storm. A lot of well wishers, which thank you so much. I appreciate you guys being concerned about me and everybody else around here. I appreciate that. A lot of people said they were sending out prayers for everybody down here, which is awesome. We're, we're happy that you're thinking about us. We're thinking about you too, <laughs> because this isn't the only crisis right now, is it? No. <laughs> No, but it's just uh, what's going on today, isn't it? There's other things too, other things. So, a lot of people were asking since yesterday if I'm leaving or uh, if I'm staying. That's why I released yesterday's shark video early. I would have normally released it at 4 a.m. because you know, a lot of people think that I'm awake all the time. Sometimes I'm awake late, late at night, but a lot of people think that I'm physically awake at 4 a.m. to release my videos. I schedule them. I upload them way before that and schedule them to go live or go public at 4 a.m. So I thought, man, everybody's super concerned. Why don't we just release this one video right now at 10 something to save me from having to reply to 600 comments? Because it's about what it was, 600 communications you know, a mix of comments emails text on uh, different platforms whoa it was just a flood so yeah I wanted to let everybody know what exactly I'm doing that's what how I did it I released that video early so a lot of people were asking after the video why I didn't leave including uh, my stepsister who sent me a text or no she commented on a video it was a public comment she was freaked out. Woo! Woo! Eh. I don't really have the means to leave because, you know, I don't have a vehicle. But uh, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> I've been through a lot of these before. That's not really a reason to stay. But it is a fact that I've been through a lot. So <clears throat> I just decided to stay. I was confident that I'd be okay not just because of my own stuff going on here. I have friends that are very confident in their ability to stay and they're really close. So if anything goes super bad here, I do have a safe place to get to that is within five minute walking distance, not even that. So I'm in good hands, got a lot of good friends here that are super close and plenty of good friends that are not super close. And I, yeah, I got you guys. I could just talk to you all day to kill my uh, nervous wreck problems, but I don't have one yet. I do have the emergency beer. <laughs> Probably not gonna get into it. Just can't believe that I almost slept through this. I'm surprised I'm, and kind of happy and I hope everybody's okay, but I'm happy that it's just rushing in super quick. It means it's gonna be done. It's gonna wreak havoc. But if it sat on us or it stalled out or it was moving slow, it would be far worse for all of us. Right now, it's probably well into land because it hit Port Fushan not too long ago. And after it hit that, it comes back over water a little bit. And not too long after coming back over open water, it hits land again, it hits the mainland. Because Port Fushan is an island. So. It should be done for a lot of people, but we just have this, this bit of wind here. It's rough. It's over 50 at the moment, sustaining around 50 or a little over 50, probably gusting well over 60, 70 miles right now still, but it should calm down in a lot of places. This storm, I'm not getting good internet connections. I don't know if it's diminished from a Cat 4 yet. Likely, because it was predicted to come down to a cat two once it started moving into the, the homa area man this caffeine's working come on let's go sit down you guys getting nervous you ready to go outside <laughs> you might not want to Woo, rumble 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 let's get through this dark spot it is now after three we just have tropical 
force winds out there. Since I have the power, I want to make breakfast. So we got to do some dishes. And dishes done. So I'm going to make a breakfast skillet. First, I need to cut these things up right here and parboil them. All right, I got the carrots cut up. As you can see, small pieces. I will cut these potatoes up into small pieces as well. The smaller the pieces, the faster it will go. The bigger the pieces, the longer it'll take to cook. We don't know how much more time we have with the power on right now. It could stay on throughout this whole thing. Remember, it is diminished out there severely. It might sound horrendous out there, but the wind is sustaining only tropical force winds, which to some people sounds scary when you start talking about a wind speed over 50 miles per hour or 60 miles per hour. I think 65 is being recorded in the New Orleans Metro, which technically, even though I'm not in Orleans Parish, I'm considered like on the edge of that metropolitan area. I know I keep making references to the emergency beer in the refrigerator, but honestly, I don't think I'm going to get into it. Like I said, I'm not a big drinker. I drank more when I was younger, but these days I tend to forget that there's even beer in the refrigerator. I tend to forget there's even beer in the grocery store. The most calming thing for me to do right now is to cook, even though there is a coon hound coming butt right up my butt get away <laughs> she's like just trying to see if i'm cooking kale she likes kale for some reason all right third potato i'm gonna make this kind of uh earthy uh wholesome you know a few more vegetables we're going to use meat too we will reveal that particular meat here soon all in so we're going to fill this up with water to where it's just about let me get that smoothed out we just want about a half inch above the vegetables we're almost there things are kind of floating right now too there we go i'm gonna put this on high and i'm gonna parboil it for about 10 minutes but i'm not going to start that timer until it starts to boil and i might put that over it the meat reveal i got this the other day it was not a bad purchase it's frozen though, so I'm going to get this open and start the process here. Whew, I had to just bring the whole thing out. There's one. I think these are going to be good. All right. While I'm waiting, I'm going to stay productive and keep doing stuff. This is a purple onion. It's got a nice bit of flavor to it. We got to get that peel off. And here we go. I am going to go for big and small. This is kind of a weird wedge cut here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go across like this. Move it around and come back across. And that's good. Half a bell pepper. All right, got that done. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut it the other way to get small pieces. Some of them are going to be irregular size. That's fine. Gives it a little, little bit of diversity as you're eating it. It's kind of weird when you're eating food you made at home and everything's uniformly cut like it came out of a can. It doesn't seem like real home cooking, does it? You want things kind of irregular, big and small and weird shapes. Chaos! Let's drop that heat down a little bit and start a timer. Mushroom time. Again, I'm gonna do your regular cuts. I'm just gonna get it in a pile like that and just kind of randomly go through with straight cuts. I'm gonna end up with all kinds of shapes and sizes, which is really what I want. Sausage patties are pretty much thawed. Now I wanna break them up. I'm not doing a skillet with whole patties here just kind of chunks i'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil to this not much the sausage patties are already seasoned but i'm going to add just a little more this is sachery it's kind of a cajun thing a little msg this is black pepper i'm going to up the heat now now that i'm getting a good sizzle here i'm going to go ahead and add 
the paper plate trilogy even though the sausage isn't fully browned it's not a big deal it'll get there i kind of would like that to happen with this stuff in there my goodness i think i put too much in it'll shrink as it cooks because we got to add potatoes carrots peas eggs and cheese oh i'm giving it away i'm gonna go ahead and cover this with this paper plate i've done that many times here and no chaos has happened it doesn't catch on fire I just don't have anything else to cover that with it'll cook faster like this and retain moisture but at some point i'll pull that off and let some moisture escape but we need that to all kind of sit in its own juices my anticipated shrinkage has occurred and i'm allowing the excess moisture to escape it is time to drain what i parboiled Hot, 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 hot. Adding some peas. Gonna go ahead and add all this stuff in. Let it start soaking up some of these juices. I've dropped the heat down on this pan here. I'm probably gonna drop it down even more. Time to cover this back up. Drop the heat down to a simmer. We're about ready to add the eggs, but we wanna give those peas some time to thaw and warm up back to the dark side of the counter we're gonna do six eggs whoa a little too hard mr hood oh just perfect that does work cracking your eggs on a flat surface like that you can't be too too excessive with it or you'll make a mess and you'll just make a mess in general so be aware of that it does make a mess when you crack them on a flat surface be ready to wipe. Some people don't wipe enough. Number six. Can't believe I'm saying this. Don't forget to wipe. Some people just don't wipe good enough. Little milk. Not too much. Changed my mind. Let's do two more eggs. I mean, this is going to be lunch and dinner. Get them beat up mixed pretty good this is looking more like a casserole so I'm gonna mix the eggs in just to where it is just good yeah I think this is gonna be a casserole skillet <laughs> whatever it'll be good full of vegetables and meat it's gonna fortify me against what's to come, which I don't think there's anything super bad yet. There's possibilities of her, um, I'm sorry, possibilities of tornadoes, but I think the worst is done unless something like a tornado does pop up because there are some warnings for that here and there. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Okay, and we're just gonna let that sit and cook. Let's get the rest of the eggs in there back in the dark part of the counter here need to improve the lighting in here I'm surprised we still have power guys I'd be doing this on the micro stove if the power was done I have to save that fuel I bought for another day maybe do some shore lunches or something when it cools down out there it's been too hot for me to think about that this is a medium cheddar cheese store brand it's not expensive or it's not the expensive type we're gonna cut slices that are kind of thick we're gonna use a lot of cheese scrambling it up a little bit more and mix the cook with the uncooked this is going to be an awesome monstrosity of <laughs> breakfast skillet slash casserole we're going to add the cheese now we want to cover the top sometimes I mix the cheese in but this time I'm going for more of a casserole look we're gonna just put the cheese on top like this we might need more cheese yeah more cheese more cheese please covered and smothered now I'm gonna drop the heat a little bit like down to about a one this is an electric stove most of you probably already figured that out now we're gonna cover this 
and we're just gonna let it sit. I'm sure you've been hearing drip drip in the background the whole time. That's because the roof is leaking, but it's not from storm damage. There was a couple of leaks already. It's not bad, but it's something that I will fix here pretty soon, some, sometime this coming week. It is after four, it's actually 439 right now. I've took this off the heat and I'm letting the cheese harden up a little bit. Let's see, ooh, ooh, nice. It's about ready, mm. Cut into this, kind of like a pie. Look at that. It looks more like a quiche. That is awesome looking. Oh, goodness me, I'm gonna love this. Oh, let's get another piece for me. I'm hungry. All right. As soon as I started dishing this up, Tulsa, my red bone, started baying back in there. This is looking awesome. I think my red bone is trying to tell me, don't forget to dish some up for me. All right, what do we want? Ketchup, that's what we want. Where's mine? Where's mine? Oh, <laughs> no, no. I'll give you something here soon. Wow, I'm really hungry. I haven't actually eaten anything today yet, so this is going to hit the spot. Oh yeah, definitely outdid myself, that's good. Not really like a true skillet at this point, kind of kind of more like a quiche or a casserole. It's awesome. First restaurant that I actually had a breakfast skillet at. Somebody's asking me if it's a four or a six. Reports are still calling it a cat four, even though it's, I think, rolling through the river parishes right now. Now he's asking four or five. Yeah, I'll get back to the restaurant here soon, but we're still getting reports or warnings, hur hurricane warnings, extreme wind warnings. There's one for the Orleans, New Orleans metro area. It was an alert, it said, get inside. Extreme wind warning. Yeah, you don't say. So the first restaurant that I had a breakfast skillet at, and it's still my favorite for this type of food, but it's really far away. It's Uncle Louie's Cafe in Duluth, Minnesota. Though, when I was there, I, I think it may have had a different name. I'm not sure, but it's the same place. Mm. You can find breakfast skillets on the menu all over the Midwest. Seems to be a popular thing in Minnesota and northern Wisconsin and there's different things different styles there's some that are all vegetarian some that have meat there's southwest styles it's basically you put a bunch of stuff in the skillet cook it add some eggs sometimes you scramble the eggs in other times you just cook the eggs in it like over easy or whatever There's skillets that are kind of like a combination of breakfast and dinner, like this one. There's skillets that's just like potatoes, spinach, egg and cheese, or maybe some mushrooms. Potatoes are usually the base of a skillet. I haven't been to Uncle Louie's Cafe in many years, it's been about. The last time I went to it was after Katrina. I, I stayed for Katrina, but after a while I left, like about three weeks after Katrina, I left and just started hanging out in the Midwest with the girlfriend at the time. 
Wow. This is good. Yeah, I went camping at uh, Gooseberry State Park there on the North Shore. I hung out with some of my friends in Duluth as well. I lived in Duluth for five months or so. Not long. It was right before I moved to New Orleans many years ago. Before Katrina. Hmm. I would like to go back, not not move, not to live. It's expensive and it's in Minnesota. Lots of taxes there. But there is a lot of good fishing and it's a chill place. It's interesting geographically, geologically as well. Lots of interesting species. It's Duluth is like a like an armpit. It's built along a hillside for the most part, and it's right there on Lake Superior. Very interesting place. I've been watching a live stream over the last week or so. It's the Harbor Cam there in Duluth. I think it's hosted by the Shipping Museum there in Canal Park. Pretty cool. Pretty cool live stream. If you know the shipping schedule, you can watch iron ore tankers and other cargo boats coming in or departuring. It's pretty cool to watch them come out of a fog bank off Lake Superior and come into the uh, Duluth Canal. And then you can go over to a cam that is a live stream of the lift bridge there and watch the, the tanker go under there. You can watch that bridge go up. You can listen to them, sound their horns. And then Duluth has a really old traditional foghorn that they sound. And that, that is just in, intense. I watched a ship come in yesterday that had been put in service in 1952. It'd been, it's been in service, service since 1952. Rust bucket. It was high, um, I'm sorry. It was hauling iron ore pellets at the time when it came in. This is good. I'm kind of just letting this uh, this vlog go. It's going to be a long video. It is probably coming up on 5 o'clock now. I thought it would be a little tamer by now. But it's still kind of blustery out there, blowing hard. Lots of rain, lots of rumbling of the trailer, and there's other things going on, you know stuff blowing around. Amazing that I still have power. I've been talking to people the whole time today in open public forums and text messages on different, you know, different platforms that I that I am present on, mostly Facebook and Gram, the Gram, and talking to friends through Messenger. Some people lost power quite time quite some time ago. There are quite a few that still have power. The report, the official report, oh, it's more of an estimate, I should say. It's 430K people without power. Hmm. That is quite the broad area. And that estimate is probably going to grow as we go on. Apparently, the storm has slowed a little bit. Uh, I don't know what it's at, if it's a cat four or if it's diminished. But I'm, I'm getting reports from the media, take that with a grain of salt, that it's still a Cat 4. But some of these reports are lagging because whereas my internet is good here, it is in and out. 
from the power being in and out, but doing stuff on the phone, the phone is much slower right now because the network is stressed. You would think that the internet would be the same on the laptop from the cable company, but it's not lagging as much as the phone. Things are a lot faster coming in from the cable company. So all these news reports that I'm getting are coming through to the phone, not on the laptop. And I look over at the Weather Channel and they're still preaching doom and gloom. I would like it to stop raining so me and the dogs can get out and we might either continue this vlog with that or shoot another vlog. I might have to go over and help a friend. It doesn't sound like it's too bad over there, but they're leaking too. Might, might be able to get out and fish. I doubt it. I want to, but I doubt it. But when it's safe, I wouldn't mind throwing down with my friend down the street and maybe doing a drive around this area to look at the damage. If it's really safe, I could take the bike most likely going to just get out with the dogs, but I have no idea when that's going to happen. At this point, the dogs aren't even bothering me about going outside. They went out earlier for just a few minutes. They peed. I'm sure they got to drop beans and whatnot. They're not even bothering me about eating. They're, they're just hunkered down. One's at my feet right here, and the other one is right behind me on the bed looking nervous. Always could have been worse, and I know there's areas where it was. So I hope everybody's okay. Hope property damage isn't too bad, but I know it's likely that somewhere out there it is really bad. Hmm. I'm lucky that oh man, I brought this ketchup out and I didn't even use it. This must be really good if I don't need ketchup. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so what I was going to say before I got sidetracked by my ketchup bottle. Nothing big has hit the trailer, but I have looked outside, kind of concerned about some things with the trailer, and I keep looking out to see, you know, it's the skirting. Keep thinking the skirting is going to get ripped off. It's not, it's okay, it's all there still. But when I do go out, I'm not bringing the camera out. I've done one shot out the back door. I don't want to dox my location too bad. So I, I, I kind of like my privacy. I don't like, I don't mind running it into fans. You guys are great, a lot of you, when I'm out shopping or something, or I'm out working, I'm out fishing. You know, fishing is my work. But there occasionally is somebody who figures out where I live and shows up at three in the morning when I'm asleep and leaves a gift or tapes through the window <laughs> so that's not nice but when I was outside I saw some limbs down on some roofs I saw some damage nothing nothing real bad hmm Wow, this was really rich. A lot of food. I wonder if it's gonna make me sleep. It's kind of noisy out here. It's usually noisy, but this is a different kind of noise. It's usually more of an industrial noise during the day here. You know, I live real close to a military base, so a few times a day, it sounds like the fibers of reality are getting ripped in half when those jets come over. Hmm. Wow, this video is going to be long. This was supposed to be a fast moving storm, right? Like come in and out. Well, the eye is nowhere near me now, but it's still got a lot that it's pulling in. 
that wind is turning up, right? Doing this. And I'm on the east side of the storm, so that's why it's still like this. This is where all the wind is and the rain. But I, I doubt that I've had hurricane force winds of 100 or more today. Probably the highest wind I think I've had here is somewhere in between 65 and high 70s maybe. Those are gusts, not sustained. Mostly it's, it feels like 50 to 60 sustained wind, but in a lot of periods where it was feeling sustained below 50 miles per hour, about 40 something, 45. We've had some lulls. I would like a good lull to me and the dogs can get out. Wow. Mm. Wow. Definitely if you go to Duluth, Check out Uncle Louie's Cafe. That place is the bomb. It's uh, an artery clogging bomb. <laughs> Emergency beer time, I think. We're getting bad reports. The hurricane has slowed down severely, but it's moving. Come on, beer. It's coming. I'll tell you, the life of a vlogger, doing things with one hand. There we go, we got one. It's moving east of Homa. So we're still sustaining some bad winds. Oh, yeah. So it's 5.30 right now. And it's still rumbly out there. Pretty, pretty gnarly, pretty gnarly. I'm gonna get into this beer just a little bit and then get my rain gear on. Probably just the jacket. And I gotta go outside and gather up the skirting. I've lost some more, but it's still out there. I've got maybe three panels, I think, that have ripped off. I don't know about the other side of the trailer. I just know this side behind me, where Mr. Yeah, behind Mr. Yaz's butt, we've lost three panels. And I wanna go get it. It might be all busted up and not, not able to be used again. But I'll go gather it up, bring it inside, and maybe later see if I can put it back on. It's usually the first thing to go on a trailer is the skirting. You trying to get up under my arm? What do you want? We just lost power, but somehow... Oh, and there goes the internet. And just like that, it's back on. Let's see if the internet will come on. <clears throat> I'm watching the Duluth Canal Cam. It's on the Duluth Harbor Cam channel. It's a live stream. I was over here trying to look at the schedule. Oh, the, the schedule downloaded. Awesome. We're going to try and see. We got a departure, I think. Oh, no, no. You see where it's red right here? That's already happened. Oh, man. Did I miss everything? Well, it says six estimated time of departure. Okay, maybe it still hasn't happened because it's 5.57 and the departure is tonight at 6.33. It's a cargo. The year built was 1977. The drought is 20 feet. Cargo is iron ore pellets. The size is... A thousand feet by 105 feet and it's underway I know this is kind of a nerdy thing to be into oh and then our next one is actually not too far off but in the middle of the night this is a arrival right here that's going to be at 12 a.m. and then the next one the next arrival will be at 3 a.m. I doubt I will be awake for those. Maybe this one. Gotta make sure this 
clips in. Whoa! Whoa. Leaves everywhere. Here's some skirting. Go ahead and pick this up. Oh, wait a minute. This came out from under. I didn't even know this was in there. I guess maybe it was okay, but we'll go ahead and get it out of the way. Get this last piece, but before I go in, my goodness. Lucky dog. Look at that. that I'm glad that didn't fall in the house. There's somebody that usually parks right here, but they're gone. They left. Oh man, it's dark in here now again. Oh no. There we go. You all right down there, Tulsa? There it is. I don't know why the light goes all stroby and trippy. It only does that on this GoPro. Let's see if I can find it. I'm kind of feeling around in here blind. Success. This is a dorky 1000 lumen rechargeable work light slash camping light. Got to get these dogs out. They're desperate to drop some beans. I had to put Tulsa back inside. She was too scared to stay out here. She peed and then automatically wanted to go back in. Yaz is uh, always a little more adventurous with this stuff. He's just desperate to take a dog. You might notice that this place that we're walking by has power. That's because they have a Cummings diesel generator in the back. It's absolutely huge. Heel, yes, heel. Ooh, this little dog has a mission. He's like, come on, come on, come on. Let's get to a place where I can crap. <laughs> the big one just was not having this. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Come on, let's come over here. I hope the rest of it doesn't come down while we walk through this corridor, yes. Whoa, yes, heel. I'm only wearing flip-flops. Looking at it loose right here, yes. Watch out. Let's come over to this side, yes. Because that bitch is loose. I'm trying to get around, get up here by the McDonald's so he can take a dog. Unfortunately, yes, we're going to walk into the wind here. Come on, man. Start spinning it out and dropping it. Little whiz there. How about a little dump of some beans? Wanna go somewhere more sheltered? Or the rain's not hitting the butthole so hard? Okay, let's come over here. Oh my goodness. How about right there, yes? There you go, bean dropping time. Yeah, you're right. I guess over there he was like, man, this is a little too much. I don't know why I'm gonna do this. Well, I'm gonna pick it up. We just gotta get to the trash can, guys. You guys see that over there? Look at the bottle getting water off the lens. Look at the hood of that truck. 
it's open. <laughs> Here we go. One deposit made. This is the fun part. We gotta walk against the wind, little buddy. Look at this. The wonderful McDonald's landscaping has been ruined. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. One thing I want to point out that I gotta watch out for. Can't, you don't want to step where it's painted. The painted bits in these parking lots are really slippery. I almost have to walk with my eyes closed because the rain is stinging against my face and my eyeballs. But we know where we're going. We just have to walk looking down, hold my head down. Yeah, that must have been stinging on the mud hole, huh? That's why you didn't want to take a dump over there. Come on, man, let's get out of here. Funny things I talk about with my dog. What are you looking for? You want a Coke? Dogs don't drink Coke. Drenched to the bone, let me tell you. Kind of feels good because it it's starting to heat up in here. I don't want to open windows because it's of pressure issues. You can end up blowing out windows doing that. Plus, the way that it's crazy out there, it's just going to blow rain in through the windows and. I already have a couple of roof leaks back here, but the buckets are working, so no disaster there. Poor thing. It's too too much out there for you, huh? You're just gonna You're gonna cook those beans, huh? You're making a dog bean casserole. So yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching guys. Remember everything was okay. No major issues here. But pray for all the other people because there are there are plenty of major issues out there with this storm. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.